<laughs> Let me go ahead and uh, start talking a little bit. Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the mental house. I miss y'all. How y'all doing out there? My luscious, illustrious family. I got a couple things I want to talk about, y'all. And um, I need some feedback on it. First of all, um, on a personal note, uh, you know, it, it is very, very difficult. A lot of y'all know I just lost my brother a couple months ago. And, I, and like I said before, when it gets to be the summertime and when the spring starts, I mean, when the spring is over and it's the early days of summer, um, I think it's going to be a grief period all over again because my brother was such, <laughs> such a summertime person. I um, love throwing stuff on the grill and just everything that family and Summer brings, so I don't want to get into a real emotional thing today. But I miss my brother a lot. And, uh, you know, it don't get any easier. And I just know that he's made that transition. And, uh, you know, it's a little difficult. I mean, I miss him more and more every day. And no, there was no... There's no suspect in custody yet. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's just no peace right now. No peace still right now. So those of y'all who asked, well, now you know. And I'm hanging in there. I'm trying to maintain like everybody else that has experienced and uh, how to deal with some kind of freaking inhumanity that we do to ourselves. Anybody that's experiencing a murder this morning, a death of a loved one, all that, my heart goes out to you. And my prayers go to you. So um, now that I uh, moved on past that, got that out the way. Let me say something to y'all. You know, these people are really, really crazy out here. They're really, really, really crazy. And they messing with people's damn kids. This is what I'm trying to say to y'all. Listen, you must begin to, and I know it's, for some of y'all it's real difficult because you might have just laid down and had sex and you, you didn't really have no rhythm to it. And you woke up and you was pregnant and you just don't know what that encompasses other than you somebody's mom or somebody's daddy. But what I want you to know and I want you to bear witness to is that you are a blessed person and so is your woman. I want you to know that the fact that you were able to bring life forth from your womb and from your loins is a special occurrence. Not one that should be taken lightly. Not one that should be um, just thought about in the most frivolous, careless manner. It should be a team working to produce pyramids that will change the next direction. In my opinion, is that you can't do that when your children are all scattered across the nation. But they don't get your respect or your responsibility. And if you don't uh, believe it, ask them when they become adults. How they felt being in a scatterbrained family. Because your daddy decided to go lay pipe with every person that he um, encountered. And if that wasn't bad enough, he decided to have children with everybody that he laid pipe with. That is a bad phenomenon. That is not a healthy mentally mental phenomenon. And I don't care what none of y'all say. Y'all can call me prude. Y'all can call me whatever you want to say. I contend families are most healthier and the most healthy when you have uh, uh, um, 
a woman that's bearing children by one particular man? Um, and or if you have a situation where you are living like some crawls or in a community situation, um, then that situation has to be totally honest. It has to be spiritual based. It has to be direction motivated. And it's, it's not for the carnal act of just having sex. It's to build a village. And if you're not doing that, if you're not building that village and that curriculum, you got all different scattered brain type of chicks that you got to hide from one chick from the next. And nobody's all getting along because you've lied to every one of them. You just wanted to make a bunch of babies. And so you can feel like you replenishing the earth in that sense. You're being irresponsible. irresponsible. And the older you get, you're supposed to get more wiser. The more, the older you get, you're not supposed to get more irresponsible, okay? So, I hear a lot of people, and my brother is one of them, that says that he needs to produce a lot of children because he don't think he's going to be here long. And he wants to leave a piece of him behind. So at this point, he has about 14 children to about, I believe, uh, 10 or 11 different baby mamas. Uh, which is a tragedy, which is pathetic, which is nowhere near king behavior. Um, so if he had a turban on or a turban off, it's still irresponsible, it's still ridiculous, and it's still um, not doing, not giving the black community any kind of game that it needs to go forward as a respectable group of people. Okay? Because you cannot have a respectable group of people and you still maintaining your life like you did when you were a plantation slave. If you are still operating your life as if you were still a plantation slave, going around impregnating everybody that you see, everybody that just um you want to that you have sex with, now you land down, you done met them on Facebook, you done met them on Tinder, you done met them, and you done brought them home, and you having sex with these people, or their Instagram models, or their wilding out models, or wherever you find them, and you, you use your platforms, or you use whatever uh, 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 trinkets that you have to dazzle, but the ultimate goal is to have a baby, another baby, and to say, because I have money, I can take care of them. That makes it all right. You know, if you could talk to most of these children out here that are adults, and if they would be 100% uh, honest with you, they would tell you, I hate it um, that I had to split my mom and dad. I, I, I don't like the fact that I got sisters and brothers across town that I don't know. Or that my father tried to make us know. Now, you can transition a society and socially engineer them to any kind of moral corruption, psychological corruption that you choose to. And I think that slavery was that mechanism for us. Because now we have the opportunity to raise strong families. And uh, we're continuing the the language and the behavior that was forced upon us. And and for to me, that is a tragedy in itself. And I'm saying this, y'all, like, where is this coming from? Because I watch a lot of, uh, one of my favorite programs, y'all know, is Lauren Lake in that divorce court, I mean, um, paternity court. And, and it's not just so much as who's the daddy that I watch it. I watch that show because it is so telling on the human spirit. It is, it is so many lessons in the, um, in the dynamic, of, dynamic of being human in terms of how we lie, what we do when we're confronted with the truth, how difficult is it for us when we are confronted with the truth, how many, some women are so irresponsible sexually that they having sex with multiple men. Listen, I'm not here to judge you because I, 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 I know about that. Okay? 
But the bottom line is you're not thinking about anything that may happen or transpire when you get up from this act. You think because it feels good, you should do it. I'm very um, disappointed whenever a 17-year-old or 18-year-old tells me they're pregnant. Very. Because first of all, I know your the, the, the human being's mind don't stop growing until they're 25. So here I truly do have a baby raising a baby. And they're proud about it. So I can't really say, well, honey, you, you, you're you not even finished playing your damn self. Why would you drag this baby through all this craziness? But you can't say it because we've become sensitive to the issue now. To the point where, yeah, people don't want to fight. And they don't feel that you should say anything to them that um, when it's affecting your community, your family, your existence, because we all lump together. And we're all we're in this together. And so if we can't get our minds right, then of course, I was always told that if you don't use your mind, your brain, you'll use your tail. You don't use your head, you'll use your tail. And it seems like we have a whole lot of people out here that, uh, especially my people, that are constantly using their tails in situations where they should be using their brain and their heads. You know, um, I can't say, I can say, but it doesn't matter well, what a person does in their life. That's their business, right? I'm talking about an overall situation. When you talk about these children overall, I know I ran group homes. I know when I've talked to the children, when you ask them about their mother and their father and their relationships, and they talk about it being scattered as if, and my daddy this, and my mama that, and my dad, I hear the cries of the children that y'all don't necessarily hear. I see the damage from the babies that y'all do. And that ends them up in treatment facilities and foster cares and treatment foster homes and uh, day treatments. Um, I see them in those situations where they need child psychiatric workers and CPWs and, and, and the works because they've been so damaged psychologically from the adults that have been adjured the responsibility from the Almighty to take this these pyramids and recreate and go replenish a strong mind. Not because you can say your ABCs and e, e, F, D, H, I, J, K, Elemental P. No, because you are spiritually sound. You are morally upright. This is what we need. This is what we need. And I hear for all of us talking about what other people do. You know, other people make sacrifices that we're not willing to make as a community. And a lot of our downfall is because we're not willing to make those sacrifices. Okay? And I'm not saying, and cause really at this point, the human family is my family. However, my clan is black folk. So when I say some specifically to black folk, that's what I'm, I'm meaning. I'm not saying that we're the only ones doing stuff. I'm just saying it's worse off for us because we're already under the uh, bottom of the totem pole anyway. So if a white girl gets pregnant at 14, she'll get a TV show, 14 and pregnant. If you get pregnant at 14, you going to go to the girl's home or lady pits or you going to either be shamed and you going to have not a TV show. You can bet your bottom net. So, I want y'all to know that I'm 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 just saying that we need to protect and change the way we see procreation with our nation. Because we don't, we got a bunch of tumbleweeds just going to be rolling around in the desert. And just because you can produce a hundred kids don't mean you should. It really don't. I don't care if you can take care of a hundred. That's just some kind of ego shit you want. You certainly are not doing what's best for that child. 
you're doing what's best for your ego. And this is certainly that and having children are the, is the most selfless job that you can possibly have. So why would you? Why would you not take this serious? And be very careful and very selective about who you bring kids in the world with. And know that at 17, 18, and 19, you should be trying to protect your stomach and your virginity. And your, well, not so much your virginity if you're out there having sex, but your ability to be somebody's parent. You should give that a second thought until you get a bit more maturity up under your belt. Have a little patience with yourself. You'll enjoy your baby much better. And you'll probably bring the baby to birth under much better circumstances. Now, with that being said, otherwise you won't keep a cycle going of madness. And we can't afford no more of that. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to see y'all in the next video. I know some of y'all mad about this one, but that's okay. Just get a big glass of water and chug it down.